Welcome. <laughs> Hello, I'm Leah Wilson Fellis. This is a yoga class for the Community Partnership in Teller County, which is in Colorado. And um, so this is a free class. I offer it on Zoom. I offer it in person and I'm recording it. So if it turns out good, I'll put it up on YouTube. My YouTube channel is just my name, Leah Wilson Fellis. So feel free to check that out and get some awesome beginner friendly yoga videos. So there's a lot of videos to choose on on there. So let's get started as I record this as we practice this in person. We it is May 2nd. So it's the beginning of a new month. And so I've got a mudra that is all about new beginnings. So it's also Monday, the beginning of the week. So maybe there's some goals, some things that you need to achieve. Maybe there's um, something that you'd like to make space for in your life. So that's what this mudra is all about. It's called the Ganesha mudra, which happens to look like an elephant. And I love elephants also. But what elephants do is they've got a big head. And as they meander through the jungle, their head moves stuff out of the way. So what they do is they remove obstacles. And so this mudra is meant to make space, remove obstacles in our way so that we can have some protection for new beginnings. So what you do, it's pretty fun, is you bring your hands together and you interlace your fingers. You wanna make sure that your right thumb is on top. I guess that doesn't really matter in the end. So, but for now, they say right thumb on top. <laughs> then the middle fingers, you're gonna extend the middle fingers straight down and then your index fingers have to extend out and try to wrap those index fingers around the back side of the middle. So if that doesn't work, bring the index fingers together. Just tips of the fingers. Traditionally, you've got to tuck them behind the middle fingers. So either tips of the fingers together or tips of the index fingers tucked behind. The thumbs are going to tuck straight down, straight down towards the middle finger. So now you've got an elephant trunk elephant ears, and a cute little elephant face. That's what it looks like. <laughs> so that's the elephant mudra. I feel like getting there is really hard, but once I get there, I'm like, wow, that's kind of comfortable. I like that. But if it's not comfortable for you, don't feel like you need to hold that. And that goes for everything that I offer. So even while we're stretching today, if it doesn't feel good for you, if it doesn't work for your body, don't feel like you need to stay there. So what we're going to do is start to just relax and breathe because for some of us, this might be the first time that we've like sat down today and made space to just breathe. So let's take a big inhale and a big exhale and let your body just try to relax your shoulders, try to relax your neck, relax your jaw. Maybe close the eyes. Maybe you find something to stare at on the ground. And we're just going to breathe really simple in and out through the nose. As we breathe, you can use your breath to clear the pathway for your air through your nose, through your throat. Notice how your belly expands as you breathe in. We kind of make space for all of our organs. And then as we exhale, it kind of contracts back to the center. That right there is a really good for our organs, for our digestive organs. So you can kind of focus on that for a moment. And it's kind of interesting because when I do that deep belly breathing, not only do, does it help me with my digestion of food, but I also notice that the digestion of life is a little bit more easy for me. So as I keep breathing those big breaths, life is more easily digestible. So we're making room. That's what this mudra is all about making room for new things in our life, new beginnings. It's a new month, it's a new week. So let's take one more deep conscious breath here together in through our nose, settling into our seat, grounding down heavy like the elephant. 
you're welcome to release your hands if you haven't already. I always wiggle out my fingers a little bit just to see how they, they might need to stretch a little bit. Let's do some hand stretches here. So as we begin, find your most comfortable seated pose. So seated like me, you don't have to be, you can, you can extend your legs out if you want. But let's take our, our right hand and just extend the hand out like this and pull back on the fingers a little bit. And then I kind of tilt my wrist down, I tilt my fingers in, wrist out, fingers in, and then just kind of move my hand around so that I can find a good spot where I feel a good stretch. Now, if you're like, that does not feel good, you might need to lighten up. You want it, you know, you want your stretches to be a little uncomfortable, but nothing you can't breathe through. When you're ready to release that hand and do the opposite, let your hand become dainty down to the side and pull back on those fingers. Pull back on the knuckles. You're gonna feel it through the extensors and the top of your wrist now, and feel free to explore. So you might need to tilt your wrist, tilt your arm down, try to relax the shoulders. I find that with almost every stretch, I'm like shoulders up to my ears. So it's like, okay, relax. Relax. <laughs> so that's why I say it so often. It's not you, it's me. Let's release it, shake out the hand. We should do that on the left side too. So we'll put our left stop sign out, pull back on those fingers. And then for me right here, I don't feel much. So I've got to kind of tilt and explore and find the stretch. We're creating balance in our body here today. Balance is the name of the game. So what we do on one side, we're always going to do on the other. We must be grounded to find that balance, to create that balance. When you're ready to switch to the extensors on the top, just flip your knuckles down, fingertips to the floor, and then gently pull back on those knuckles. Again, you can rotate, try to relax the neck, relax the shoulders. Nice work, looks good. And whenever you are ready to release, you can release that out, shake it out a little bit. Let's just interlace the fingers here. It doesn't matter which way and do some figure eights. It's just lubrication of the wrists. And there's no rush. So take your time with all of these stretches. Now I'm going backwards too. So I just switched the direction of my figure eights, which is a little bit of brain yoga. <laughs> the brain's like, wait a minute. I have to think about that. I practice a lot, so it's okay. <laughs> now what we'll do is we're just gonna kind of lift our elbows up. We've done this one a lot. Push our hands out, round your back a little bit, look down. Let's kind of squeeze it out from side to side with a little squeegee. You can bring your hands to one side, ribs to the other, and then just switch it up a little bit. Nice job. All right, from here, let's bring our hands up over the head. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Now release the hands because, you know, they've been doing that for a while. We're going to use our left hand to grab our right wrist and kind of pull over to the left. Nice job. Keep that right sit bone rooted. Sorry if I sound a little muffly in the speaker. My sweater's kind of in the way there with my hands overhead. We'll bring our hands back up and switch hands. So right hand grabs the left wrist and we draw to the right. Nice job, everyone. Bring it on back up to center. Release those hands down. We'll sweep them back behind us. Go ahead and kick these legs out. We've been with our legs cross-legged for a while. So then we'll just open up our chest, squeeze those shoulders back. Take a big breath. Ground through your sits bones. That's your, where you're sitting on the floor. Reach your hands out up to the sky and we'll start to fold over top. Over our legs, for your toes, for your ankles, for your shins. You can just kind of hang out there. It doesn't need to be so intense. So don't feel like you have to reach your toes today. We're all at different levels here with our body. So wherever you land is a good place to be. As long as there's no pain. One more deep breath here. Maybe it's the first deep breath you've taken in the posture. We'll roll ourselves back up. Nice work. 
I'm gonna roll my shoulders out a little bit as I roll up. So no rush. If you're still enjoying that stretch, enjoy it as long as you need to. So now these shoulder blades are just kind of rolling up, forward and around, and then up backwards and around. Nice work. <clears throat> now you can stay with your legs straight. You can crisscross your legs. It's totally up to you. We're gonna continue a little bit more with the upper body. So we're gonna take our right hand down right next to our seat here. We want our elbow to bend back as we do this. So we're not gonna, we're gonna try not to do this like I usually do and instead release that elbow down. Keep your left sit bone connected as you reach up with the left hand. You should be feeling kind of a stretch over on that left side over there. But then the trick of this is that you can press through your right hand to press yourself back to center. And then the left hand can come down, bend that left elbow back. Keep your right sit bone rooted as that right hand reaches up to the sky. Try to feel a stretch on the right side. There's some strength building in the left shoulder. And then we'll bring it back up by pushing through the left. Now, if you want to, you can do it the same fashion we just did, or if you are a person that likes to slide out, you can, but that's gonna require core strength to get back up. So it's up to you. I'm just gonna bring my hands slightly farther away, bend into the elbow and lean through the left. So the left is reaching to the right. A couple deep breaths. As I breathe, I can feel those ribs expand and contract and expand and contract back together. With this next inhale, push through the hand, the right hand, bring it back to center. We'll do it on the left. So that left elbow bends, you can slide it out if you want to, reaching through the right arm. Couple deep breaths, expansion, contraction. Expansion with the inhales and contraction, relaxation with the exhales. Press yourself back to center. Let's add a twist this time. So the left hand will come over to the right side of the leg or on the mat over here, it's totally up to you. We'll sit up nice and tall, the right hand slides behind. We're gonna kind of ring out the core. So as you inhale, we sit up tall. As we exhale, we twist. Inhale, sit up tall, release the twist a little bit, but then exhale and ring it out. One more time, sitting up tall, make the space and then exhale to twist. Let's go the other way. The left hand sweeps back behind. Right hand comes over there to the left side, the mat if you like, the floor. Inhale to sit up, make space. Exhale to ring it out. Inhale, sitting up tall. Exhale to ring it out. Last one. Nice, that's really good for digestion too. Ringing out our organs. We'll take our right hand back behind us. We wanna support ourselves with our hands. I'm gonna to turn to the side just so you can get that side, side view. So beginners, hands are gonna be facing back. Advanced, hands are facing forward. I'm somewhere in the middle, so I like my fingers to be facing kind of outward. <laughs> so from there, I squeeze the shoulders back. If you want to put pressure on your hands, you can, but you got to kind of gauge, is that too much on the hands? Does it hurt your wrist? Does it hurt your finger? Squeeze through your butt, point your toes down, look at the sky. That's called a reverse plank. Flex your feet, toes to the sky, drop your butt back down to the floor. Let's sweep our arms out. Really reach through those arms up to the sky. We'll drape over top, straighten legs. Stretch it out. So the, the most common kind of yoga in America that's practiced is called Hatha Yoga. It's spelled H-A-T-H-A. -H -A. And it means sun moon yoga. So ha and ta is sun and moon. So we're going to be working the left and the right side of the body today. Balance is the key. Grounded is the key. Staying grounded into the earth is the key. So imagine that, you know, as an elephant, heavy. There's that heaviness in the feet. So imagine that. 
We'll start to roll our way back up to seated. Let's do the opposite again. We'll practice that reverse plank. So you do not have to lift off your butt. You can just squeeze the shoulders back, look up at the sky. If you want to lift up onto your hands, you can, but you do not have to. That's just another added element. Flex the feet to drop down. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn back forward is we're going to pull our right knee into center here. So the knee drops out to the side, the foot comes up to the inner thigh or the knee or the calf, wherever you like, and we're going to stretch this left leg. So you can just slide down. I like to inhale up first and then fold over. So of course, there's more than one way to uh, get to the same ending result here. So this is known as head to knee position. So just by bowing your head down to your knee, you're going to feel a good stretch. Remember your breath. Make space with your breath. The breath is the vehicle for the energy in the body. So imagine that with that breath, maybe with that exhale, you're, you're making way, making way through those tight muscles. Nice work, everybody. Now let's do a little bit of rocking. So we'll rock the toes out to the left. Your right sit bone might lift up there. That's okay. I feel it in my waist and my inner thigh. Then I'm going to rock inward and I feel outer thigh, left butt cheek, <laughs> ribs. So just keep going back and forth if that feels good or if it feels better to hang on and kind of let each direction stretch out. You can do it that way too. So depending on what kind of energy level you're at today, you might move faster, slower, do what it is that you need for your body. Nice job. We'll slowly roll ourselves back up whenever you're ready to. So if you are hanging out there for a while longer, that's okay. We're gonna just kind of karate kick our legs out the other way. So left knee drops out to the side, foot to the center, right leg is straight this time. I always take that big inhale, <clears throat> excuse me, but you can just roll forward if that's what works for your body. And then we'll bow over top. So it's head to knee position. So even if you're not at your foot, even if you're grabbing your calf, just bowing your head to your knee is going to increase the stretch. A couple conscious, deep breaths, making way with that breath. You can add movement whenever you want to, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm just turning my toes, my right toes in to the left, and then I'm gonna turn them out to the right. And I notice all those spots where I feel the stretch. You can move fast or slow, or you can just stay still. When you're ready to exit this pose, don't have to wait for me. You can roll up whenever that time comes. So <clears throat> hang out longer if you need. Again, we're gonna kind of karate kick our legs, but this time we're gonna kick the left leg out to the side. So I'm gonna kick that left leg out. The right foot comes into the center. So I've got space between my foot and my thigh and it's pretty tight. I typically see people do this number where their toe and leg turns in and you can see that space under my leg. We want to keep our butt bone on the ground. So grounded is the name of the game today. Let's sit up nice and tall. I already feel a stretch, so I don't need much here. All I have to do is kind of lean forward a little bit and I'm already where I need to be to feel that stretch there. And then I try to relax my legs, relax my shoulders, relax my jaw and take a couple deep breaths. Grounding through the left heel, the left sit bone, the right sit bone, outside of the right ankle. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, if your mind becomes a little agitated, like uh, sometimes our brain kind of gets a little like pissed off, <laughs> then movement is a really good thing to do for that. So if your body and your mind are getting frustrated, then add movement. A little bit of rocking feels good. 
Nice job. Now we're going to add a side bend to this. So we'll reach our left hand down our left leg. It could be your knee, your shin, your foot, wherever you are, strap is good. Then the right hand, we're just going to kind of reach it across our chest at first, over to the left foot. And if you want to, you can open that up to the side. So that's your choice. Both feel good. Both have benefits. So sometimes I'll just kind of edge in and out of both of those positions and work some stuff out. Nice work. Give yourself some time. Time is usually the ingredient in the recipe that we skip over. When you're ready to, you can certainly roll yourself back up to center. You know what we're going to do. We're going to karate kick our legs out the other way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so left foot to the center, right foot out to the side. At first, just ground through sits bones. Ground down through the outside of the left ankle and the right heel and just start to lean forward a little bit. Some of you are very flexible, so you can really kind of flatten out over the legs here. So just finding that stretch in the right inner thigh. If you're finding any kind of frustration in the brain and the mind, then maybe adding some movement, rocking to the left, rocking to the right, back and forth. It kind of takes you in and out of sensation. That way it's maybe not so overwhelming for the brain. Well, this side's definitely tighter for me. <laughs> but it might be different for you too. Whenever you're ready to, you can add the next step, which is that side bend. So reaching the right leg, right arm down the right leg. It could be your knee, your shin, your ankle, your foot, a strap. Then, I'm sorry, right. Yes, I don't know what I said. <laughs> then the left hand is going to reach across the chest. You know what I mean. <laughs> and then we'll open it up if you want to. Remember, both of those movements have really good benefit. Like when I reach across the chest, I feel it more through my shoulder. And when I reach over, I feel it more through the ribs and the waist. So in and out of that is good, or just holding one for a while and then holding the other for a while. Nice job, everyone. And just remember, you don't have to keep doing what I'm doing just to keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> you can bring yourself up and out of the pose or change it, get creative with it whenever you would like. When we exit that pose, I'm just going to bring the feet together into the center. Now that both sides have been kind of stretched out a little bit. So I'm grabbing onto my toes. They're still a little cold, so I'm just holding onto them to warm them up. And then I'll start to lean into them a little bit. So it's totally cool if your knees are a bit more lifted. Just keep in mind, we're all at different levels here. Our body has different restrictions. All of us have been through some different experiences in our life, so that might contribute to the tightness that we feel. <laughs> nice job. You can rock in this one, you can cat and cow, or you can just stay still. Tune in and notice if your legs and your hips feel balanced. If you're noticing that one hip, one leg is tighter still. Rolling up whenever you're ready. Nice job. Pulling those knees up together like the pages of a book. Give yourself that little break when you do come up. Your feet can be kind of stacked like mine or you can cross your ankles. That makes it easier to hug those legs into your chest if you cross the ankles. I like that one. I just pop my back by lifting up and drawing my shoulders back. <laughs> nice work. All right, so we're going to visit Baddha Konasana again, but after we do Navasana. So I'm just turning to the side here. I'm going to start really beginner, feet on the floor, uncrossed, hands on the front of the knees. This is what we're looking at here, this shape. So from my knee to my hip and my hip to my torso, 
it kind of looks like a V. So this is good with the feet on the floor. That's beginner. Intermediate, you can start to lift your feet up a little bit. Both are gonna get you the same thing. So I'm gonna let go no matter whether I'm hovering or my feet are flat. That's up to you. We're just gonna do the arms. Just both arms reach up. Oh, that makes it really hard. And even with my feet on the ground <laughs> and then back down, I'm gonna do 10 of those. So this is two, three, four, and five. I'm starting to get toasty. I can feel it. If, you're, if five is good, stop at five. There's six, seven, eight. We've got two more. We can do this. Nine, 10. My core is shaky. I can feel it in there. So I'm gonna separate my feet or separate my knees, feet together, I'm sorry, and then roll forward. All those words get mixed up sometimes. So I'm kind of rounded in the position. You can have a straight back if that feels better for you. It's really your choice. The thing about yoga is that yes, we are stretching, but true yoga is knowing yourself, knowing I do not like this pose and not staying there just because I'm there. That's true yoga. Let's roll back up when you're ready. And if you're like, I hate boat pose, don't feel like you have to do this. <laughs> I'm gonna pull my knees together, feet flat for beginners, hovering for intermediate. As you become more advanced, those legs get straighter like a boat. So you are the boat, but I like intermediate. So then I'm gonna do the legs and I'm gonna try to straighten them and then bend them and straighten them and bend them. So last time we did the arms, we're at three, four, five is good. If you want to stop at five, go back to Baddha Konasana. I'm going to do five more. Four, three, two, one. Nice job, Baddha Konasana. Thank God, Asana. <laughs> Feels so good after all that hard work, all that uh, kind of cinching at the center now we can relax a little bit nice job everyone my next one is going to be a combination of both of those so if you're like no okay i'm like okay that's yoga <laughs> so if you want that challenge follow along if you want to go back to the beginning one just do the arms or just try to hold it you can do that so i'm hovering and i'm gonna do right leg left arm yeah and then this and for some reason this makes it really easy for me i'm like oh i could do it 50 of these ones let's do four three two one that's already ten so when you're ready Come on back down to the Urbata Konasana. Nice job. I like that. I like that one because it's like this mind distraction and you don't realize how much you're working. You're like, oh, right, left, right, left. And you're like, wow, it's already been 10. Good job. Let's roll it up when you're ready. We'll pull the knees together and then just kind of roll over and flip a roo. I'm gonna set up my little blanket so that I've got some extra cushion. If anyone here in the studio needs some extra cushions, I've got a couple little ones if you would like to borrow them. My hands are gonna be flat on the floor here and I create a tabletop. And that means that my, my uh, table legs are not gonna bend. So I wanna keep them pretty much straight. We drop into a cow pose. And then we drop into a cat pose, or lift, I should say. We're dropping the head. Nice. Now go ahead and go back and forth a couple times here between the two. So there's both a dropping and a lifting with each of them. With cow pose, we lift our head and lift our tailbone, but drop the belly. With cat pose, it's the opposite. We lift our spine, lift our belly into the spine. I really like to add dog wags too. So as I come back to center, I kind of just rock my hips from side to side. Once in a while, if my knees are giving me some trouble, I don't like this pose. I don't like rocking to the side of the knee. So feel free to omit anything. 
my hands are feeling kind of, my wrists are kind of tired today. So let's come up, let's roll up onto our knees into a forward kneeling position. And we'll uh, kind of just step our right foot forward first. So if you need some balance, you could touch the floor and step that right foot forward or help it forward. We're gonna bring our hands onto the top of that right knee. So this is called Anjanayasana. It means just low lunge position. You wanna make sure you can see that right big toe in the inside of your knee. That means that your knee is stacked nice and square. If you want more stretch, you can lunge forward. Feel that in the left thigh. Nice. Now this is a beginner pose. So if you'd like to add more challenge, lift back up. The hands can come up over your head. Now you have to use your core to keep lifted and we'll lunge again. If you choose to look up where the wall meets the ceiling, you're now in crescent moon pose. Nice work. Go ahead and float those hands forward by the right foot. The left hand, the opposite hand is gonna drop into the floor. Same hand as foot is gonna reach out. So right arm reaches out, right arm reaches up. Really create a nice, a nice pressure through that left hand so that you're stacked from left wrist to right wrist. Beautiful. One more breath. Let's drop it down. Now I'm gonna move us into lizard pose. So bring your hand to the inside of that foot. Walk your foot out a little bit and you wanna make sure that your knee and your toes are pointed in the same direction. I mean, it looks awkward when someone's like this or like, <laughs> so I like it to look aligned because then you're not gonna twist your knee. So you can stay on your hands like this. Some people are like, my wrists hurt. So you can come on to an elbow if you want to. But if you're like, that's still too much for my body. That's just too much in the hips. Don't feel like you need to stay here. Remember that we're all at a different level. So we've got to make those choices for our own body. Whenever you're ready to, if you're like, my hips cannot handle this anymore. Go ahead and slide back to child's pose and you're gonna feel a huge difference between your legs. So I press up to my palms. I beautifully swing that right leg around, separate the knees and try to find that child's pose. Maybe it's more like a puppy pose. That's okay too. Some people untuck their toes. Some people tuck their toes in that position. So. Really, it's just whatever works and whatever feels good for your body. Now, while you're here, notice how the front side of your left hip right here is kind of burny. It's like, wow, yeah, I really stretched that. And then it's the back side of the right hip. And we're gonna switch that. <laughs> so we're gonna create that balance next. So whenever you're ready to, you can join me. I'm gonna roll up, tabletop position. So I realign my legs and then I'm gonna roll up to a kneeling position and step my left foot forward. Hands on the knee is beginner. Let's just try that and set it up. So we lunge forward into that Anjanayasana. To come back, I push through my left foot Lift my hands up overhead. I'm just gazing straight ahead. And then I lunge through. That's an intermediate on Janayasana. And then as soon as I look up towards the ceiling or where the wall meets the ceiling, I move into the crescent lunge. Big breath. Exhale, bring the hands down, frame that left foot. It's gonna be right hand into the mat or maybe a block if you happen to have one. Left hand, same arm as foot forward is gonna reach out to the left, maybe up towards the sky. You really wanna create a nice pressure through that right wrist so that there's one long line from wrist to wrist. When you're ready to come down, bring that left hand to the inside of your left foot. Walk your left foot out a little bit. Turn your toes and your knee out. 
If you still need more room, you're feeling like a little congested in the hips here, you can slide that back knee back to get further down. Some people need to drop onto an elbow or onto um, pillows if you happen to have them handy at home. Nice job. You might notice the side's different. Is the side tighter, looser, more uncomfortable in a different way? If you need to exit that pose, don't wait for me. Go for it. Whenever you're ready, I'll meet you in child's pose. To safely get there, I press up to my hands and kind of send my hips back and then swing that left leg around to hands and knees. Separate the knees. Nice. Now you can really feel the heat on the front side of your right thigh. Where all those hip flexors stretch in the back of the left hip, the glute. Great job, everybody. We're loosening up our low back, our pelvis, and getting ready to, to, to move here and flow a little bit. So let's roll up to hands and knees. Nice, tabletop position. Tuck those toes under and then roll up off those knees into your first downward facing dog. It feels pretty good. Nice job. We're gonna do a quick practice of a step through. So reach your right leg as high up as you can. We're only stepping the right foot through, right foot forward. Step as far forward as you can. Now you're in a high lunge. Press up to the top of your right knee. Find that balance, create that balance, manifest it. Grounded through the feet. That's where that foundation really lays, the feet, the groundedness. If you'd like, you could float your hands up, keeping your legs just the same, but it's gonna change the feeling. Nice job. We're gonna practice that on the other side. So float those hands down, frame the foot. Step that right foot back, downward facing dog. Pedal it out a couple times. That's a hard transition, everybody. So you're doing it and you're doing great. Even if it's not pretty, it's okay. Reach your left leg up as high in the sky as you can. And then step just your left foot forward. As far forward as you can. It's okay if you need to make adjustments later. I walk my hands up to the top of my left knee. I get my balance. I'm grounded. I'm heavy through the feet. <clears throat> And then as I gain that core strength, I feel sturdy. I can start to lift my hands. But as I lift the hands, you have to engage the core because you're no longer settling on that knee. So that changes the sensation. Float the hands down. Instead of stepping back, let's step the right foot forward. Nice work. Soften the knees, separate the feet. And let's relax for just a moment like a rag doll. Soften, bend, separate. I always think about getting my belly on my thighs. And as my belly rests on my thighs, my low back relaxes. When you're ready to, let's roll up. Release the arms nice and slow. Stack your back. So start with your feet. Start with your legs. They stack. Then we start to tuck the tailbone. Roll up through the lumbar, through the ribs, all the way through the neck and the head. You can reach up to the sky at the end. Create that conduit of energy and bring it right down into your heart center. We're just making room, making space. If you're getting warm, let me know and we can turn that heat down. So it's up to you. <laughs> All right. So it was just a new moon with a solar eclipse. I'm going to tilt this up so that I'm not so um, decapitated in the video. <laughs> Still a little, but that's okay. So we're going to do moon salutation on each side and then a sun salutation. Inhale right here. Exhale, hands to the sides. 
inhale, sweep up to the sky. Now keep those hands up there and sit into a chair. So this is part of the moon salutation. You sit in the chair, chair position. My knees are separated here. So you don't want your knees to be knocked together. We want them to keep separated. Legs are burning. Mine are too. It's good. They're getting strong. That's your knee muscles. Start to fold your belly onto your thighs. If you want to straighten your legs real fast, that feels pretty good. Now let's lift halfway. So straighten your legs and lift your hands up to your shins. Now notice when I turn to the side, if you look up at me, you can, I'm, my neck is straight. So I'm trying not to look like that. I want to look straight back at my toes. Yeah. One more breath bend through your knees. Get your fingertips on the floor. We're only going to step our right foot back. Nice job. We're ready here. So our left foot's forward, our right foot's back. Remember what we just did? Hands to the knee. That's step one. Step two, hands to the heart. Step three, hands overhead. You don't have to visit all those steps. Bend that knee a little deeper. The leg starts burning. That's a good thing. It's getting strong is what that means. One more breath. Exhale, float it down. Now remember that twist we did with the low lunge. So it's right hand to the mat, left hand out to the left, or even up to the sky. Big breath here. Power yourself up. Bring that hand back down. Let's step that left foot back to downward dog. Thank goodness. Nice job. Pedal it out. Let's finish up our vinyasa here. Look to your hands, roll forward to plank. Hover for just a moment. You can drop to your knees if you'd like. Untuck your toes and lower to the mat. Thighs, belly, chest. Keep the elbows tucked into the ribs. Look forward, that's sphinx. If you put pressure on your hands, it's called cobra. If you happen to straighten your arms, it's called upward facing dog. Back to cobra, back to sphinx, back to crocodile. Let's go to downward dog. Tuck your toes. I roll up to hands and knees first, and then lift up off those knees. Any way that you like to get there is a good way, as long as there's no pain. Nice job. Reach your left leg as high up there in the sky as you can and step just it forward first, then the right. Nice work. Lift halfway, flatten your back. Exhale, bend through those knees. Relax for just one breath. Big inhale. Big exhale. With your next inhale, sweep your arms out. Slowly roll up towards the sky. You can feel the heat overhead here in the studio. And we'll bring the hands right down to the heart. Heart center. And the heat turned off. 70 degrees, I bet. <laughs> up there. <laughs> All right. So we've got one more side to do, one more moon salutation, and then we'll flow like we, always, like we know how to. So inhale right here. Exhale, hands down to the sides. We are making room, making space in our body for new beginnings. As we exhale, we'll forward fold. Now this time we're gonna bend our knees equally. Don't let your knees knock together. Lift your hands away from the mat forward. I, I feel like I'm diving, but I know this is not what you're doing when you dive. <laughs> I'm going to lift my hands up, keep my hips low. My legs are burning. That's a good thing. We're getting our, le our legs and our knees strong. Go ahead and fold back over those legs, fingertips down to the mat. And this time we are going to step our left foot back. As far back as you can. You've got three steps to choose from. Step one is on the right knee. Step two is heart center. Or three is up over the head. All these steps are good. Soften that knee when you're ready to. The front knee, the back knee. Nice work. One last breath. Power yourself up. 
Exhale, float it down, left hand to the mat on the inside of the right foot. Right hand reaches out to the right, up to the sky. Strong arms, strong legs, you've got this. Good breath, ground all four limbs, so fingers and feet. Step that right foot back, downward dog. Nice job. Pedal it out. Look to your hands, roll it forward, plank. Inhale at the top. Exhale, lower down. Heart lift of your choice. I like Cobra. And then I'm going to roll back down. Tuck those toes and find my way back to my downward facing dog. In downward dog, I'm looking at my toes, looking at my ankles. I don't want my big toes to touch. Just like in chair pose, I want my knees and my feet to be slightly separated. Look towards your hands, reach to the sky with your right foot. And step your right foot forward, then your left, then your right, then your left. As many as you need. Lift halfway, flatten up your back. Exhale to the forward fold. Hang out, take a couple deep breaths. Let it all go, just hang and loose. When you're ready to rise, you're welcome to. I just sweep my arms out like a bird, start to stack, ground through the feet, rolling up. Hands will reach over the head and back down to heart center. Nice work, everybody. We're going to finish it all up with a sun salutation. You all know a sun salutation, I'm sure. <laughs> so you're welcome to follow along. You're also welcome to go faster or slower than I do. So it's totally your choice. I'm going to do a vinyasa style, one breath, one movement. But my breaths are slow. So I'm like floating through molasses as I go here. So that's what I imagine. I imagine that I'm like pressing through honey as I move. So we'll bring our hands at heart center to begin. Remember to set like a little intention. Is there a goal that you're making room for in your life? Inhale and exhale, hands to the sides. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up and overhead. Through honey, through molasses, exhale, soften through the knees, forward fold. See how my forward fold, my knees are bent? <laughs> I'm going to straighten my legs and lift halfway. That's called the half forward fold. And then exhale back to the forward fold with my knees bent. Choose a foot, step it back. Ground your palms, step the other foot back, downward dog. Pedal it out a couple times if you like that. Catch your breath. When you're ready to inhale again, roll forward to plank position. And then exhale to lower down through chaturanga. You can drop to your knees for that, and then an inhale to your heart lift. Now, if you're an upward dog like this, your arms are straight, then you can tuck your toes, lift off your knees, and hike those hips up to downward dog. But if you're not an upward dog, I would safely lower back down to the mat, tabletop it, and then roll up. So there's definitely a safe way, but if your body is warmed up enough, there are other things you can do. Look towards your hands, walk, step or hop forward. We'll lift halfway. Inhale, exhale, relax. Let's do elephant pose. <laughs> so we'll separate our feet here, stack one hand on top of the other, and start to rock from side to side. Your arms are an elephant trunk. Kind of like a pendulum swinging from side to side. Imagine that you are the elephant head removing the obstacles out of your way as you sweep and meander through the jungle. This stretch also feels really good in your low back. <laughs> maybe, maybe your hips, at least in mine. I can't tell you what you're feeling though. 
So if it doesn't serve you, don't feel like you need to keep doing it. I'm gonna slowly start to slow it down. And then I'm gonna kind of heel toe my feet a little closer together. Soften the knees to protect my back, sweep the arms out and slowly roll all the way up, all the way to standing. We'll ground through the feet, bring the hands to the heart center. A couple grounding breaths. Nice work. I know we've been practicing balance a lot lately and well today it's all about balance. So I'm just gonna do a really simple tree pose today. If you'd like to join me, you can. If you're like, I wanna lay down on the ground now, you can, <laughs> I give you permission. So I'm gonna <clears throat> ground through my right foot. My left knee is gonna bend and I turn it out to the side, but my toe is on the floor. My left toe is on the floor. That's a supported tree pose. I'm supported by my toe. I like my hands together. I love the branches too. And then if you want the challenge, you can wrap your foot around the ankle or the calf, or even bring it up into your inner thigh if you like. So that's your choice. Great balance today, everybody. Sorry, I said that. <laughs> we have heavy elephant feet. <laughs> Beautiful. Release it down whenever it looks so good. And I love that you can close your eyes too. That's really hard to create the balance within. So now I'm shifting all the way into my left foot. My right knee is going to bend out to the side. You can stay with your toe on the floor if you want and wrap that around the thigh is good spot too. Heavy elephant foot grounded into the floor. Nice job. One side's usually better than the other, so it's all good. <laughs> you can blame it on the planets for sure. <laughs> all right, so we're going to start to get our way down to the ground. I'm just going to put my jacket on here because as soon as we stop moving as much, I start cooling down. And so let's find our way down to the mat. I just roll up my blanket into a little pillow, do a little downward dog, but then I just draw one knee forward, slide it out to the side to roll over. That's just the fancy way to get down onto your back. All right, so let's do some hip openers as we lay back. So we'll have our feet flat and knees bent as we're flat on the floor. Start by just kind of massaging your low back and hips, rocking the knees. And we'll just do our simple, simple laying reclined pigeon today. It's really just a beautiful way to slow things down. So what I'm gonna do is cross my right ankle outer ankle over my left thigh. And so if you feel a good stretch, you can stay there. You're also welcome to pick up that um, left foot up off the ground and pull it closer to your body. A little rocking from side to side feels good. Some people like to straighten up their left leg and kind of just flex and point their toes a couple times. Release it whenever you're ready to and make sure to create that balance in the body. Balance is not something that we find. Balance is something that we create. We manifest it. So we have to put some effort into balance. So as far as the physical body is concerned, make sure that what you do on one side of the body, you do on the other as well. When you're ready to, you're more than welcome to just get creative and 
do some extra stretches if that's what you need. Traditionally in yoga, the last couple minutes is a shavasana time, which means it literally means corpse pose. So just laying on the ground, feeling all of the work that you've done. It was a very active class today. So you should be very proud of yourself. I know that for some of us, finding stillness and finding quiet is the hardest part. The most uncomfortable part. And so again, knowing yourself, knowing that you don't like that is yoga, but also leaning into discomfort is also yoga. <laughs> so experiencing the things that don't always feel amazing knowing that we can push through experiences that are not very comfortable and survive. We are stronger than we thought. I know this can be hard for many of us just laying on the ground. So feel free to keep moving. And if the mind becomes uncomfortable, come back to your breath without judgment, without shame. There are eight limbs of yoga and we just practiced about three of them. Asana, which means positions. Pranayama which means breath control or breath freedom. And now we're practicing focused attention meditation, laying on the ground, focusing on our breath and our body. The process of yoga is clarifying your body with movement. So if you sweat a little today, that is good. You're clarifying your body. You're getting it tired. You're breathing and clarifying your lungs, your blood. Hopefully getting a little bit more relaxed in the body so that you can prepare for meditation. That is, that is the process of yoga. So thank you for honoring your body and stretching your body today. Let's start to make some more movement by maybe just wiggling your hands, your feet. I like to walk my feet up so that the feet are flat and the knees are bent and just kind of rock from side to side. Now, of course, if you're at home and you would like more time to just rest, please just hit pause or, or stop the video and lay as long as you need to. I'm gonna choose a side to roll on to. If you don't wanna choose a side, then feel free to just roll right up to a seat. All right. Coming back to where we began, we can kind of just tune in and feel all the changes that we've made in just one hour. Knowing how strong and capable our body is, how we have the ability to soothe our own nervous system, our own muscles. You can keep pushing, you can let go. We all have those choices of balance. Reconnect with that goal, that intention, that thing that you're creating space for in your life today. And let's take one more conscious deep breath together, breathing in, filling your body up, grounding down, staying grounded, staying balanced. Remember, balance cannot be found. It's not lost keys. We have to create it. Create the balance in your life, your body, 
and manifest it. I thank you so, so much for joining me here today, for stretching your body with me, breathing with me today, manifesting a little bit of balance and tension, creating some space. In yoga, we say namaste, and it means I bow to you. Thank you so much for joining me today and rolling out the mat with me. And shukriya, thank you so much.